Hallelujah, hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Jatina. Mag, good morning. It's Gwen. Mother Gwen, good morning. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and we shall be glad in it. Listen, I want to thank you all for being in, being in the room this morning for 6 a.m. point of prayer. Amen. I believe in the power of prayer. I believe in the power of prayer. Amen. I believe in the provision of prayer. I believe in the potency of prayer. The impact of prayer. I am always... Um, empowered by the word of God but the Bible says that when Jesus was hung on the cross gave up the ghost the Bible says that when he breathed his last breath something significant and symbolic happened the Bible says that in the temple the veil was rent in two Symbolizing that there was no longer a barrier, an obstacle between us and God. The middle wall of petition had been broken down so that you and I could have free access to God. Luke 18 and 1 says, men ought to always pray and to not faint. Second Chronicles 7 and 14 says, if my people which are called by my name will humble themselves pray turn from their wicked ways seek my face then will I hear from heaven then will I heal their land Matthew 18 and 19 it says if two or more of you touch and agree on earth about anything it shall be done by our father which is in heaven hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts this morning with praise. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We choose to rejoice. We choose to be glad in it. We're so grateful to God this morning that he has not left us to ourselves. But God has so fit that this morning that we should rise, hallelujah, that we should have life in our limbs, we should have air in our lungs. David said it this way in Psalm chapter 3, I arised after I slept for the Lord, it was him that sustained me the giver of life, the creator, the forger of our victory. He is to be exalted and he is to be praised. Oh God, how we thank you this morning, oh Jesus, for your faithfulness towards mankind. The psalm writer said, what is man? that you are mindful of us. Your mind is full of us this morning. How you are caring and concerning about every intricate detail of our life. We're so forever grateful. So we magnify and exalt you above our situations, above our problems, above our trials and our tribulations, oh God. We set you above our worries we told us in Matthew 25 because you are such a great king a caring father you said why do you worry about what you should eat, eat what you should drink what you should wear consider the lilies of the valley, the valley. they don't toil neither do they spin Yet Solomon in all his glory was arrayed better than these. You said, consider the sparrows of the field. They don't sow, 
neither do they reap, but here today and tomorrow they are thrown into the oven. Aren't you more valuable than sparrows? Aren't we more valuable than the lilies of the field? But our Father knows what we need. He'll take care of us. Matthew said concerning Jesus, which one of us being considered a good father, if your child was to ask you for meat, would you give him a scorpion? If he was to ask you for bread, you would give him a stone. Who, what, what father would do that? Consider this, that our father is in heaven is much more, much greater of a daddy than we could ever be. If we are to bow our heads before our throne and let our knees hit the altar, bring our petitions to our Lord, shall he not hear us this morning, Facebook? Shall he not answer our call? Shall he not hasten to our plea? Oh, Father, we ask for forgiveness this morning for the doubt that we've shown towards your name. How our anxiety and worry has plagued us. It has drifted us far away from your presence. God, it has made us antagonists to your grace. We're asking for forgiveness this morning. How we disregarded your power. How we have forgotten to put ourselves in remembrance of the things that you've done in the past. How you've been a deliverer. How you've been a savior. How you brought us out before. Oh God, how quickly we forget that you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. Our hearts are reminded of the word this morning. That we've never seen the righteous forsaken. Nor have we seen his seed begging for bread. God, how quickly forget about your majesty, your splendor, and your care towards those who are called by your name. God, how you leave the 99 and you go after the one. God, how you shed your blood, even if it was just for one of your children, you would have still approached the cross with humility and courage. You would have still laid down your life for just one of your children who desired salvation, who desired to be connected to the Father. God, how quickly we forget that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. We that dwell therein, oh God, you have founded it upon the seas. You've established it upon the floods. Who shall be able to stand in your holy place? Those of us that have clean hands and a pure heart. Those of us who have not lifted up our soul unto vanity, oh God, no sworn deceitfully. For we shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of our salvation. We are the generation of them that seek you. That seek your face, O Jacob. So this morning we lift up our heads, O ye gates, and we lift them up. I everlasting doors. 
and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty and better. So we lift up our heads, O ye gates, and be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts is his name. Oh God, the Lord of hosts is your name this morning, Jesus. And we lift you up. You are a triumphant God. God above the heavens and God above the nations. Our hearts bow unto the author of life this morning. Our redeemer and our trust. Oh God, there is no other help but you. We thank you, Jesus, that our affections and our hearts and our minds are turned towards the king this morning so that we'd be like Esther, oh God, that with boldness and confidence we would approach your chambers knowing that everybody else has cast us out, society has cast us out, our peers, our colleagues, our families are disgusted with our faith, oh God. We've become a board in the eyes of those that hate you. We've become outcast in our own homes. Even in our culture and our society, oh God, we have been marked as traitors. We've been marked, oh God, as radicals and religious, oh God. But we know where our king comes from. We know where our king sits. So like Esther, we approach your chambers, O oh God, knowing that you have the ability to extend your scepter. To give us forgiveness, to give us favor. Lord, we hadn't been right. Forget in our enemy's sight. We haven't been right in our own eyes. It's before you, Lord God, have we sinned. Have we transgressed? Our iniquities are ever before us. And make us like Isaiah this morning. He said, God, teach me to do well. You touched his tongues with coals of fire. Then he could speak your word. Make us like David who understood that his adulterous ways had separated him and his God. But he knew where he needed to be. He knew where he needed to posture his spirit. He knew that there was nowhere that he could flee, oh God. For your eyes are upon the righteous. You are Jehovah Roe. And he said, create, create in me a clean heart and renew in us a right spirit, oh God. Cleanse us with hyssop and we shall be white as snow. Then will we be able to teach transgressors your ways. God, we don't want to do it by ourselves. We soon be swallowed up by our adversaries. Our enemies would overtake us. The waters would drown us, God, if you wouldn't save us. If you didn't become our guard, our safety, and our protection. So it's into the name of the Lord Jesus that we submit ourselves this morning, even as we approach the Holy of Holies. We bless the name of the faithful one, the God who is just, the God who is righteous. The God who is wrathful and loving. It's in this God that we trust. It's in this God that we trust. We trust in the Lord. We lean out into our own understanding. In all our ways this morning we acknowledge the King. shall direct our paths. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Come on, somebody this morning say, God is directing my path. 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 Hallelujah. Listen, this morning we want to pray strategically. We want to pray strategically. We want to pray strategically. As you all know, there is a political problem as we speak as we pray this morning the moratorium has been lifted for families across the nation that this morning the moratorium for families not being able to be evicted was lifted. It's estimated that 11 million people would be evicted this morning because they cannot afford to pay their rent. They cannot afford to pay their mortgage. There are people who will be evicted this morning who are probably taking advantage of the system. But as a counter perspective, there are also those individuals who truly are in financial straits. They're in monetary binds and they just could not afford to pay. There are going to be people who are going to be sitting on there the curves this morning the side of their beds pulling their hair out trying to figure out where they're going to lay their heads where they're going to house their kids it is the responsibility of the believer in the church to pray for those that are less fortunate some of you went through the whole pandemic you never had to worry about where you were going to live you never had to worry about your rent you never had to worry about your mortgage and while congress has went on vacation called a recession a lot of our families and friends are going to be displaced this morning i feel it is the responsibility of the church for us to pray I don't like praying unless I'm praying according to the word of God. We're going to be praying for the homeless and the evicted. I want to pray according to Psalm 68 and 6. Psalm 68 and 6. Psalm 68 and 6. Listen, oh, I want to go up a little further. I want to go to verse 4. See what the word of God says. Sing unto God. Uh, sing praises to his name. Extol him that rideth upon the heavens. By his name, Cha. And rejoice before him. We ought to praise our God in advance for the things that he's going to do. Verse 5 says, A father of the fatherless judge of the widows is God in his holy habitation in other words the psalm writer is setting us up to let us know that we are about to encroach upon the holiness of a God who takes care of his people he takes care of the less fortunate he takes care of the disadvantaged he takes care of the disenfranchised Verse 6 is where I'm trying to go. God setteth the solitary in families. That's the King James Version. He bringeth out those who are bound with chains. But the rebellious dwell in the dry land. Let me read that to you in the English Standard Version. 
God sets the solitary in a home. He leads out the prisoners to prosperity. Our God has the ability to bring habitation to our brothers and sisters who don't even have a place to lie their heads today. Who won't have a place to feed their children because of an eviction notice they've been served. Our God is a God that is able to provide them a home. This is our prayer this morning, oh God. You know every person, every child, every husband, every mother this morning. Who will make the, have to make the terrible decision of trying to find a place to stay before the sun goes down. And there are many of your children, God, who've been alienated away from their, from their family members. Don't have a place to go. There are many of your children, oh God, who don't have the financial means to go to a hotel. They live in cities and areas where the shelters are already full. It's in these situations, oh God, that we believe that you will rise up and help. That your arm is not too short to save, oh God. Hallelujah, but that the floodgates of heaven would open up over cities across this nation. That you would give wisdom to those in political positions. To help your children, to bring aid and guide. Hallelujah, that families will put aside their differences and help their cousins and their aunts, their uncles, their extended family members, and bring them in till they can get on their feet. Oh God, we pray this morning not just for help, God, we pray this morning that you make us the help. Maybe this is the time in the season, oh God, that we ought to use our resources. We ought to use our own homes as arcs of safety, as places of peace for those who are not as fortunate as us. Oh God, I, I believe the word of the Lord when you said you turn the heart of the king whatsoever way you list. God, there are some landlords today, oh God, that I'm believing that you will touch their heart and be merciful to their tenants. That don't have to abide by the time constraints of the moratorium, but by the time constraints of the Spirit of God who's allowed them to to be merciful to these families so they can find a place of shelter. Oh God, we don't need a resurgence of our homeless population. We don't need to see families on the street. I know the cameras will be rolling. The media will mob these families put video cameras in their face and relinquish their dignity. God, we don't need that in our country, God. We don't need our families and friends and relatives to be humiliated. Not this week, oh God. If there's something that can be done, God, I know that you could do it. So I don't call on the government for aid. Oh God, we call on you for help. The government is upon your shoulder. Yield 
and wield the hand of our executive branch, our legislative branch, our judicial branch. Yield their will to your will this morning. Our local states, municipalities, and principalities, yield their will this morning by your hands. Our communities will they yield, yield their will by your hand. Oh God, even our own homes. Let our, let our wills be yielded to the King so that we can care for one another, oh God. We believe them, these people to have homes, to have a place of sanctuary, to have a place of prosperity. Even in the midst of this pandemic, oh God, there's still help. There's still a God that sees all and knows all. We believe it to be so. And we're thanking you in advance, oh God. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. We're so grateful to what for what God is going to do this morning. I'm believing. I'm believing that they're going to be families who are going to maintain their dignity that they'll never see a street corner after their eviction. They'll, they'll never see hallelujah. They'll, they'll, they'll never see a warm summer night under a bridge. They'll, they'll never see the face of a person who has to tell them that there is no more room in the end. We'll never see. I'm believing we'll never see. In my city, I'm believing. We'll never see a kid have to go hungry. Because the pantries are empty. Believing that in the name of Jesus. For those of you all who hit the street, I'm praying that your stay won't be long those of you who are thrown out by maybe a harsh landlord or an insensitive landlord that baby your stay won't be long and God will send somebody to your aid God will send somebody to your aid hallelujah glory to God amen thank y'all so much for being in position to pray this morning. The Bible says we ought to bear the infirmities of the week. We ought to bear the infirmities of the week. Amen. I want to thank you all for, for joining in. Amen. And remembering, remembering that the word of the Lord says that those of us who've done it to the least of them, we've done it under Jesus. We've done it under Jesus. Amen. Now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. So the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Grace and peace be unto you. I see you tomorrow morning here at 6 a.m. Y'all be blessed.